I don't see anything. I don't know what's going on. Something flew out. I don't know how this day can get any worse at this point. We're work camping our way to Alaska and we have only 10 days in between gigs to explore. So we're squeezing in as much as possible, including a hike to an iconic Instagrammable spot in Michigan's Northern Peninsula and a totally underrated destination that's just a mile down the road from our campsite. See? No one stole our bikes. <laughs> but boondocking for the first time in months did not go as smoothly as we had hoped. Well, this is no point on. And nothing could have prepared us for the near disaster that happened on travel day. We have an extra, right? We have a spare. I'm not sure the condition of it. We are staying at Bon... Oh! <laughs> I forgot that this step was so far. Take two. We are staying at Bond Falls Scenic Site. It is in Michigan's beautiful Upper Peninsula. I want to show you around our beautiful campsite. We found it on Campendium, which is our favorite app to find free boondocking sites. You can toggle the filter to say, just show me free stuff. And then you can stay there for, well, this one is 14 days. And in true boondocking fashion, the site has no power hookups, no water hookups, and no sewer hookups. So we filled up our water before we came so we had enough to like actually take showers and not smell and do the dishes. We are going to dump when we leave and then for power, we can either do solar or generator. But we do get a picnic table and a fire pit and we have our own path down to the lake. Did I mention that this was all free? What you may notice about this spot is that it is surrounded by beautiful trees. We're in a pretty dense forest, which is dreamy. But what it's not great for is um, solar power. Yeah, right now we are getting about 26 watts of solar out of our 640 watts worth of panels. That is not nearly enough to keep us going. So what I need to do is pull out our backup generator that we have. Literally, we only have this to charge up the batteries. As you can see, I have a phenomenal organizational system here in my garage. You might be asking yourself why we chose solar power over a generator when a generator, you know, can run all the time. Well, this is the first reason. We don't like buying gas all that much. Now let me tell you reason number two. Take a listen. This is what boondocking sounds like on solar power. And this is what boondocking sounds like with generator power. Which one do you prefer? With the generator running, we are getting about 55, ooh, big step. We are getting about 55 amps of energy into the RV, which is charging our 300 amp hours of Battleborn batteries. Not a sponsor, but hey, you can reach out if you want. With our batteries currently sitting at just above 50%, all I need to do is run this generator for another two to three hours, and our batteries will be at 100% capacity, which means we'll be able to run in complete silence for another 24 to 48 hours. Now, one of the main reasons we can do this though is because we have a fridge that runs on both electric and propane. So whenever we're boondocking, we just set it to propane and it's not taking any of our electricity. We kind of pride ourselves on being good at saving energy, or at least we used to pride ourselves on saving energy. I think, I think we're still okay at it, but we have gotten used to the generator. That is totally fair to say, because here I am, we have no solar power, but I'm using the Instant Pot air fryer. We're gonna have the toaster going. Plus the air fryer takes 1% battery a minute. Yes, 1% <laughs> a minute. I am literally using 20% of our battery capacity for some fries. Worth the 20% battery power it took to make them. have 10 days between work camping gigs, we still have to keep our businesses running. So mine is a content creation business at kaylinbrook.com. Joseph's is a podcast editing business. josephcummings.com. Book a free call. And so we still need internet to be able to run everything. Our first choice on our hierarchy of internet plans is our T-Mobile hotspot. But as you see here, we've got no service. 
The second option is to turn my Verizon phone into its own hotspot. Can you hear me now? Good. I get 50 gigabytes of data a month, and this is currently the only thing that's working right now. We do have one last fail-safe option if the other two don't work for whatever reason, and that is Starlink. But for Starlink to work, you kind of need a clear view of the northern sky. Yeah, that's not working here. The Starlink option we don't pay for every month. It's the beauty of Starlink Rome. You only pay for it month by month. So we only use it when absolutely necessary. We have not always had these three options. In fact, we went for three years with just Verizon and just using our phones as hotspots. And we started with just 30 gigabytes a month. It was pretty nuts. I'm making sandwiches for our ride to Bond Falls, and I have to know in the comments, how much jelly is appropriate on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Because I feel like Joseph's version is way too much. Half the jar. <laughs> no, it is so much. It's like you're just eating jelly. This place is only like a mile away. So it's like 58 degrees out, and I've convinced Kaylin to take the bikes. There's some ups and downs, so we'll stay warm along the way, I think. Do you have any idea where we're going? Because yes. my phone is being used to currently film. Yes, I know where we're going. <laughs> okay, good. You know what we didn't bring? What? The bike locks. So, Hopefully. if people want to steal $98 Walmart bikes, be my guest. There's no trail map, but I hear the falls, and I think this paved path will lead us in the right direction. Seems pretty um, obvious is the word I was looking for. <laughs> Our bikes. <laughs> so we ran our generator out of gas yesterday and oh let me get you some keys. All right where was I? We made french fries today in the air fryer. How much battery do we have? Yeah 41%. We're gonna use at least 30% overnight and that's not until it gets dark. I need to get gas for the generator. I guess I'll see you later sweetheart. Have fun. <laughs> All right I'm gonna go get gas. Well, this is no point now. Last time I ran it out of gas, it did not take this much to start. <sighs> We're at 38% power, worst case scenario. We can make it through the night. It'll just be a cold night. I have to turn the heat down a little bit. It's supposed to be 38 degrees tonight. And even though our heat is gas, the blower is electric. It's not starting yet. Why? I don't know. Still working on it. <laughs> yes, that's a problem. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. I'm going to give it another go. And then I found a hot tip online about a fuel filter, an inline fuel filter that can get clogged, which I think there's a good possibility that that might be causing an issue. But we're going to give this a shot and go from there. we were gonna go have to like find a campground okay babe on a scale of one to ten how worried were you oh <laughs> my wife ten. apparently <laughs> all right we are getting 54 amps in nice we're gonna let that generator run for two maybe three hours we'll see how much we can get juiced up meanwhile go to bed have a good night adventure awaits tomorrow you got the battery pack? Yep. Our we sandwiches. Got our sandwiches and everything here. I'll stick them in the bag. Oh, and I downloaded the map oh, nice. from All Trails just in case we run out of.
Don't say this. Somebody doesn't want us to leave. Or he can't kick us out the door fast enough. I'm not sure which. I don't know what it is. The whole point of coming to this area was to visit the Porcupine Mountains, which is where we're headed today. The Porkies for short. I saw all over Instagram this lake in the clouds photo that is apparently in these mountains and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So of course, I have to go take my own Instagram photo. You can actually hike to it or you can drive to it, but what's the fun in that of like skipping all those miles? I don't know about you, but this caffeine is finally hitting me. I'm feeling awake. I'm feeling ready for this eight to 10 mile hike. It's hitting my bladder at this point. <laughs> and it's like a 50 mile drive. This is our trailhead. Is that parking? Is there... No, that's not no. parking. I guess we should have gotten here early. Ah, we're good. There's no bathroom. Looks like the woods well, there's a map to a hospital. are yeah, going to be there. the solution. I'm on trail guarding duty. Feel better? I have not peed that much in a long time. <laughs> This elevation is no joke. And I think it's only, it's less than 2,000, I think, for the whole hike. So it's really not that bad, but. But we've been flat loaders. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we're a little out of breath. This seems like one of the spots that we've seen on Instagram, which is really cool because it's not at the scenic overlook where there's gonna be a bunch of people and cars and parking and all of that. So just one more excuse to go ahead and do this hike so you can get this view instead. And here's the busier overlook. It's just my personal opinion, but the overlook in the middle that you hike to, either two miles from one way or two and a half from the other, is so much better of a view than the one that you can get at the parking lot. However, the parking lot is super accessible, super easy to get to, so you, you can't lose either way. You're going to get a beautiful view of the lake, but take the hike. All right, we did 8.6 miles, which is not too far off. The all trails 8.4 and we walked around the scenic overlook a little bit. So good job, all trails. We got some snacks. Snacks. down to our last freshwater light. Try to get these dishes done before we run out, but we went six days on the tank. It is really good for us. We didn't even dip into our jugs. It's 846, we just did a last minute check of the weather and we have some rain that's pushing this way. So we're trying to get out here in the next 15 minutes. Our goal was to get out by nine and it looks like we might make it. Here you go. Bring your litter box soon, so no little extra deposits. So I need to buy a good pair of wheel chocks. I had the cheap plastic ones and they broke. So at campsites like this, a boondocking spot, sometimes I resort to, um, yeah. What is that? You couldn't wait. I was coming. I was coming. My word, that is so close to touching. What time is it? 9.10. 9.10. Not well, too bad. That's not terrible. We are going into two new states today. I mean, we've been in these states before. And we're in central time zone, so we should be getting over into Wisconsin soon, and then Minnesota. Here's what's coming. Nope. So is it gonna be pouring, at the, be pouring at the dump station? Ugh. That'll be fine. Something flew out. Either that or I ran over a tire. My 
These ones are fine. Nope. There's a strip off of it. There's a strip. That's dangerous because that tire is still inflated. That's our rubber uh, sitting way back there. That's where it went. Looks like we have a rest area in two miles. Uh, you think you can limp it? I'm just going to limp it down this road. I felt it, but I was a little shocked that I didn't hear a boom. Right, afterwards. Because you was, said we lost a tire, and then I was like, yeah. oh, I didn't hear anything. Yeah, I just saw the rubber go flying, and what I'm shocked with right now is that the tire is not flat. Like, it is fully pressurized. It's just, you can just see the metal strap at the top just delaminated off everything. I'm just really nervous that it's going to go before we can get to this rest area. That will be a much safer place to change the tire. We have an extra, right? We have a spare. I'm not sure the condition of it. I have never been so thankful to have a rest area nearby. It was such a relief to look up and see that sign that we know we only had two miles to go. It's still a long time on a limpy tire. I crawled in from the other side, put a jack, literally just lifting the pressure up. I was afraid as I was releasing pressure that the squatting of the tire could cause a failure and a big boom. And we're desperately trying to avoid the big boom. So now I'm just gonna slowly release the pressure. You're joking. No. You're literally joking. No, it's flat. I thought we had a spare. I, I'm, I thought we put this away with air in it. We'll see. I don't know how this day can get any worse at this point. I'm just looking at this and I'm wondering if that's the whole... We got 30, 34 pounds of pressure into the spare tire. I let this get up to its full pressure. It kicked off like it was supposed to. This never kicked back on. We've checked the breaker. We've plugged it into another outlet here. So now I'm doing the whole, you know, wiggle wires, see if I can electrocute myself in the routine. I hear it. It's working. So there's a fan mechanism in there, and I kid you not, it's like starting an old airplane. I spun the fan and it almost started. I spun the fan again and it went. Oh my goodness. So my spare had a leak right here in the, almost in the sidewall. This is something I should have remembered, I should have known. It's one of those things, you know, had a flat tire, changed it, and it's like, oh, we need to get that fixed and replaced. Never got around to it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Joseph is gonna get the spare on. He doesn't think the leak is fast enough to where it would be a problem with us getting to Walmart. I think it's seven miles down the road. They have a tire there for us to buy and then a very nice mechanic scheduled us for 9.30 tomorrow morning to be able to mount the tire to the rim thing. So change of plans and uh, not, not our first choice, but we just gotta roll with the punches. We'll pick up with you guys tomorrow at the mechanic shop.